Welcome back. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, how to handle loops, not endless loops, just regular loops which have an exit at some point in time, and uh, how two ways to handle subroutines, separate compiled subroutines. Now, first to loop, I have prepared uh, one program, it's actually copied, one program from uh, from uh, the project which handled uh, retrieving the counters from the C13 and higher machines. And uh, one of the counters was the uh, store into instruction stream counter, which is uh, E163. And that program does just increase that counter by doing on purpose store into instruction stream. Now let's have a look at that program. program to increase counter value of E61 on C13 or higher. And uh, the loop is here. And it uh, does it a thousand times from here to here. Now, tracing that, every instruction is one thing. Uh, now, what you can do, of course, is uh, let it run to here and then put the next stop here right after the loop or you can in the loop go into the loop and inspect what goes on there now show you uh, we compile that first and okay empty loop and go oh, come on loop here okay program is compiled and it's a batch program but uh, it works the very same way in uh, in CICS so and to execute it we need to uh, submit some GCL mm, loop yeah okay has to run in F4 we tell it where CICS is and we tell it what the original program is, empty loop, and we change the exec statement to exec trap but one. And submit. Now F4 should be waiting for us. Escape and trap. Here it is including the plus sign, which is, we can do it. Okay. And uh, the uh, first instruction, which is a attempt to execute, which is this one. And the next instruction is this one. And we'll go forward of the code here. Now let's look at the loop, loop. We go to loop, enter L, O, O, P here, and we put a stop on the instruction right before the loop, set, and now we let it run there. Now we load a thousand into register four, which is the loop delimiter, and that would, that would be, yeah, quite a loop. Um, it would, wait, okay. Uh, it would execute all these a thousand times, these instructions a thousand times. Now, instead of um, watching that instruction by instruction, we uh, do something else, which is we put a stop on the uh, on the JCT instruction on the end of the loop, which is here. In a way that it's repeatable, and that repeatable is only implemented in the basic product. And uh, uh, it's uh, this instruction A746, and we go out and we look for the A746 here. We put a stop in there. Now we have it, and now we can go and execute it as many times as we would like to watch. See. 
counts down. And when we're through, or whenever we would like to go out, put a stop here. And let it run. And now it's on the on the MVC, which we let execute and end the whole session. Okay, and it goes to a regular end of job. What you've seen is how to handle loops in your program in, uh, uh, in a way that you don't have to flip between keys forward, backward, stuff like that. Now, next thing is uh, how to handle external compiled subroutines. For this, I have uh, prepared a subroutine which is get palm and a calling program which is this is. Now, this is an eeny weeny tiny little program that uh, compares the palm given to it via the exec card against a palm given to it via set palm. Now, we first compile the subroutine. Get palm. Sub. And then we compile the uh, main line, which is gets the execution palm, then calls get palm and compares and either does a WTO or does a cancel and sub. Now for the main line we need the entry point of the subroutine and for this we check the link list. Mm, you can do that here. This is let's look where the, the subroutine is. I look at the link at it and get palm is at offset one seven zero. Okay, put that down one seven zero. And we don't need that anymore. Okay. Now when we go and execute it. Here. Uh, no, this is loop. Oh, where is this? Okay. Uh, we execute it and uh, what we do is with that set, set one palm which is this is e equals test and we set the palm for trapper which is CICS is in F2 and the original program is this is and we do exec trap but one hey comma Palm equals and submitted. Sub. And this would bring us, uh, okay, job is there. Now, when we it will ask, of course, for uh, the job name. But since we are not t uh, debugging the, the main line, but we're debugging the subroutine, we specify the subroutine's name, get palm. And we have this here. But the stop is on the very first instruction of the main line. What we have to do is uh, we have to just start. And we do that with uh, um, alternate. And we use the PF3 go to and enter plus one seven zero. Now we're on the start. 
store multiple and load uh, register 3 from register 15 and so on. Now to uh, also communicate that new start address to the source support we use minus zero which communicates to the subroutine that uh, should start counting from zero and also for the main line zero minus zero to tell Okay, now we press uh, PF11. Oh, oops, and we see that it is red, and it's red for a purpose because uh, it couldn't locate current uh, offset in the listing. So this should uh, uh, stop you and think what happened here. And what happened is uh, the system is not aware that uh, execution is not at that point, but at the start of the main line. Now what you you can look at that, but you should not do anything. So we'll go back here, put a stop on that. Oh, <laughs> no, not now. Uh, okay, PF, uh, alter at cursor, this is not what we want. We want to stop at cursor. Stop, okay. And now we have a stop on that cursor, uh, on that subroutine. Now we let it execute. PF10, and when we go now, it can verify that this is the correct location. Now, uh, we can follow the, uh, the routine just like we can do uh, uh, with a regular program. So remember, the important thing is uh, to have the entry point of the subroutine set to zero with minus zero, minus zero signals. Do it also for source support and then put a stop on that and then go into it. And then you can do whatever you would like in the subroutine and uh, single step through it or inspect uh, uh, the various things. For example, uh, what we'd like to check, we check, we check forward our program start it loads IGB proc and it loads the uh, moves back the results and goes to program and move back the results is uh, to where register 5 points to now let's look at that when we are here okay stop uh, let it run to that uh, stop point press PF10 and uh, we check the result which uh, should be uh, in register 5 uh, 5 and PF5 okay so the parameter we set is test that's compared against test which is the palm and should be equal should be should go into program and PF3 uh, and three and exit now instead of uh, doing it uh, this way uh, we could uh, also uh, first debug the main line and when it goes to the subroutine we could switch to that subroutine now this is done a little uh, we have to have uh, of course the uh, main line available and for that purpose we now compile it uh, here, so, and, and we, uh, uh, the execution GCL, here, so, and, uh, subroutine here uh, the main line look at that and follow it mm, with pip 9 okay and the 
before it goes into the subroutine, we check uh, what we have. Uh, for example, the, uh, the content of uh, value would be nice. There is uh, uh, the execution instruction is this, and value is uh, register three plus one two two. Okay, so three, and we split the screen a little bit here. One two two. One two two is here. Uh, okay. So from the outside came test, and now we call get palm uh, to get uh, the uh, parameter from set palm. Let's go back to the regular mode here and go into subroutine. Single step. Could not locate. Could be wild branch. See, it doesn't. Uh, it wants to go there, but uh, could not find it. What we do is, we get out. I we'll point to register fifteen. That's where it's attempted to go. Uh, and to change the source code, we have to do one thing, which is. Um, leave for subroutine. This time we give it uh, the name of the subroutine, and but it's on the wrong point. This is not the entry point to the subroutine. This is the uh, instruction to go there. So we uh, go to the entry point, F15, and F5. Now we have the entry point. Now we have to tell source support that PF1 and we use the PF3 minus zero to use this as relative zero and we can go into the subroutine. Mm, better we let it execute one instruction. Now we can go into the subroutine. Okay, now everything's fine. Oh, so here we have the subroutine and we can do this with the same thing we did before, which is stop on the very end, which is here. And let's see if it returns uh, the uh, whatever is in that field. Should be now in that field. And yeah, it returns the word test. And that's it. Three. Uh, that's the functionality of LFS leap for subroutine. Uh, right now, the CICS version does not have a leap for sub, uh, subroutine. And um, I can implement that anytime someone asks for it. So that's it. Here's a recap of what was covered in this uh, short clip. How to handle loops was one. And the other thing was uh, de debugging separate compiled subroutines, two methods. One is the subroutine alone, done with uh, um, just the source code of the subroutine, and you need the uh, offset of the start of the subroutine from the link edit map, and then you can go. And the other method, the second method, only available for batch right now, and uh, or you can do that at the same time, which is uh, when you enter the subroutine, you switch from the main line the source of the subroutine. Thank you for watching.